And welcome to the ETF Edge portion of Halftime Report. I'm Bob Pisani. The Russian stock market is closed for trading. The NYSE and the NASDAQ have announced they're halting trading in several Russian-based stocks that list on their respective exchanges. But U.S.-based Russian exchange-traded funds, they're trading here in the United States. How is that even possible? Let's talk to Jan Van Eck. He's the CEO of Van Eck, who runs the Van Eck Russia ETF. Jan, good to see you as always. Uh, your RSX down 26% this morning. Can you explain to us how traders are estimating the value of these ETFs when the underlying stocks are not trading in their own country? Well, I just want to remind investors that ETFs trade all the time, um, you know, when the underlying is not traded. Obviously, all Asian ETFs trade, uh, you know, when the Asian markets are closed. And Russia, on a normal day, closes at 9 a.m. So RSX is almost always trading, you know, based on, you know, quote, unquote, stale prices or what investors in New York think are, are good prices, Bob. You know, the amazing thing is this has happened before. Greece was closed for six weeks in 2015, and then we saw the ETFs underlying continue to trade. And when the Greek market reopened, it traded at the same price as the ETF was trading at. So you can have these stocks closed in their home country and still trade very well. I want to ask you about oil, a lot of crazy trading in oil stocks. Van Eck Oil Services ETF, the OIH, it's near a new high today. Uh, Schlumberger, Halliburton, they're all up 30 percent or more this year. Uh, how much more can these stocks move up, given that a lot of the producers, the Occidentals, for example, they've not announced any big production increases. Can you really I'm keep oil above $100 and, and move these stocks any further? They seem to be hesitating now. I'm a super bull on commodities, Bob. I've, I've been saying this since, uh, you know, fall of last year. You're just coming out of a 10-year bear market in commodities. These companies have been, you know, constricting their capital expenditure. It's an unbelievably good setup uh, for for a multi-year bull market. And you know, commodity stocks were so unloved at the end of last year that they're almost the anti-ESG stocks. Uh, so you've got valuation support. You can still get four or five percent yield, uh, dividend yield on some of these stocks. Uh, and uh, listen, it takes a long time to increase production of, of a lot of energy stocks and green metals, uh, green metals. So I think there's there's a ways to go in this trend. 